Ah, summertime. That time of year when everyone goes outside and has barbecue and games. And what exemplifies summertime more than explosions? So today, let's talk about the best ways to have explosions in your fantasy settings. When you need a big fireball without using a fireball spell, you can't go wrong with flour. No, no, not the pretty things that grow outside. The white powder we use to make bread. Now most people are gonna ask, how is flour gonna blow up? Well, most people don't know until recent history. Being a miller was one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. You would have milling stations and bakeries blow up randomly. Part of the problem was there was so much fine flour dust that accumulates in the air, any sort of spark would cause it to spontaneously explode. And it's that high concentration of dust in a small area that would do it. Your players could devise some kind of trap that sprays flour or a flour like dust throughout the air and all you need is that source of ignition and boom, the whole area goes up. A second great way for explosions is with oil. Oil has been known throughout mankind's history. Oil is actually the second most common liquid on the earth just after water. Oil comes up out of the ground naturally, and of course, it can be found in depths if players were to be near a mining area or somewhere else, you may find oil seeping through the bowels of the earth. In addition to regular oil, we also have oils made from fats and vegetables. Olive oil is one of the most famous. In ancient times, if oil were available, they would often spread it in fields of grass outside a castle or a town wait for an invading force to come and get close to the structure they were trying to invade and then they would light it, just throw a torch or fire arrows and the whole area would go ablaze. You would have footmen or even horse soldiers just bursting into flame, roasting, trying to get out of there. If there were some kind of an area where a lot of this oil could pool together, for example, a cistern or giant clay jars, that were then covered and your players still were able to ignite it via that fire arrow or maybe even a wick. Then it would explode into a glorious fireball. Remember, most of the explosions you see in Hollywood movies are done by gasoline. Third way for excellent explosions is simple chemistry. There are many substances when either put into water, such as sodium or lithium, they will just explode. There are also other substances which would react the same way if they're placed in an oil or if they're exposed to air. Any alchemist or perhaps even an artificer would have alchemical knowledge of such substances. They would know what you need to make things explode. Characters could find these substances simply via trade or maybe they need to go on a quest into the mountains or into some mines could be a great quest reward. One of the best substances for explosions is good old-fashioned gunpowder. Gunpowder first came around in about 800 AD by the Chinese. This is well before the medieval settings in most fantasy role-playing games. Just because you have gunpowder doesn't necessarily mean that you have guns. The Chinese would put them into tubes and shoot them off as rockets. Part of it was to scare enemies, part of it was a direct military application, and some of it was just to scare away evil spirits. But with gunpowder, you don't necessarily need to have guns and cannon if that's what you're worried about in your fantasy campaign. And in case you think gunpowder is going to feel outlandish in your setting, just remember Gandalf the Grey starts off Lord of the Rings by providing fireworks for Bilbo's party. Later at Helm's Deep, we have the orcs come up with some kind of a grenade bomb that explodes the gates at Helm Deep. If it's good enough for Tolkien, it's good enough for your campaign. Most of these gunpowder artifacts would have been used, like I had mentioned, either in a rocket to send things off, or they were constructed inside clay or perhaps metal balls which then would have to be lit by a fuse. These were the original grenades and where grenadiers came from. You lit it, you hauled back, and hoped that you could throw it before your hand exploded. Your players could 
pack a lot of this stuff into barrels, pots, whatever they got on hand, and use that as an explosion. Again, fire arrows are good for setting these off, wicks, maybe a fire bolt from someone. You'd be able to have all sorts of decorative and fun explosions. If you want to make it even more fun, start adding other substances in there. A little titanium oxide, a little cobalt blue, cinnabar, and all of a sudden you have beautiful firework colors. And lastly, one of the greatest ways to have explosions in your setting is simply a wizard did it. Wizards are going to have alchemical knowledge to be able to use any of these previous techniques plus magic in order to amplify it. There's no reason you can't have some sort of pixie dust or substances that come from magical creatures that will amplify or make explosions in and of themselves. Maybe you run into a golem that has saltpeter for a heart. Why not use that to make things explode? So everyone in the US, happy 4th of July to our Canadian brothers, belated happy Canada Day. And to everyone else in the world, happy Thursday. We'll see you back soon with more fantasy tabletop role-playing game suggestions. And hey, if you're in the market, check out Empire of the Undying Sun. You can find it at empireoftheundyingsun.com. It's my campaign guide for D&D 5th Edition 2014 horror campaign. We've got a lot of old-school gameplay with modern mechanics. So check it out.